Okay, we're going to talk about excitation contraction coupling in heart muscle cells and answer the questions, what are the key structures and events in EC coupling? What role does calcium play? And what's the relationship with action potentials? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. EC coupling refers to the following. Action potential depolarizes the heart cell membrane. This triggers calcium-induced calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium from the SR activates the myosin and actin to contract, and the heart pumps blood. In this diagram that shows five steps from beginning to end, we begin with an action potential. We end with myosin and actin contracting. Excitation, contraction, coupling, and everything in between. Using this picture, let's look at the cast of characters in the EC coupling show, shall we? First, the sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane of a cardiomyocyte. It's where the action potential spreads along its length down into the T-tubules, which are an invagination of the sarcolemma, or cell membrane, where the action potentials conduct down the T-tubule and then open L-type calcium channels. This ensures a uniform release of calcium from the SR. The L-type calcium channels in the T-tubules are also called dihydropyridine or DHP channels. I included this synonymous name because some calcium channel blockers are called dihydropyridine blockers. This is a voltage-gated calcium channel that when open allows the initial influx of calcium that we refer to as the calcium current or I for calcium for I for current and CA for calcium. Remember this um, contractile heart muscle cell action potential during phase two, that's the same L-type calcium channel that we're showing. The ryanidine or RYR receptor is an SR calcium release channel. It is a ligand gated calcium channel on the SR. The ligand is calcium that when it binds to the ryanidine receptor, it opens and releases a lot of calcium from the SR into the cytoplasm. The sarcoplasmic reticulum, or SR, is an intracellular organelle that stores calcium. Calcium that will ultimately result in the heart muscle contraction. Within the SR is calcequestrin, which is a calcium binding protein that allows the SR to store a high concentration of calcium. The myofilaments, myosin, actin, troponin, tropomyosin complex, are the proteins that are responsible for the muscle contraction. The sarcoendoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase, or better known as CIRCA, is a calcium pump in the SR membrane that transports calcium ions from the cytoplasm back into the SR lumen. And finally, we have this antiporter that helps to uh, move calcium out of the cell and the calcium pump using tri primary active transport, both of which that uh, go to restore intracellular calcium. Under resting conditions, during diastole, the L-type calcium channels are closed, there's a lot of calcium inside the SR and very little calcium in the cytoplasm, and the myofilaments are relaxed. Let's now go through the five steps that will occur to bring systole into play. Step one. The action potential propagates along the sarcolemma, down the T-tubule, and activates the L-type calcium channel. There's the action potential. It then causes the upstroke during phase zero. The L-type calcium channel opens during phase two and allows calcium to come in. The calcium, that blue circle, flows into the cell and binds to and as the ligand and activates the ligand-gated ryanidine receptor. There's the calcium current. Calcium binds to ryanidine and shing, ryanidine opens. Calcium induced, calcium release. The ryanidine receptor now that's open enables the SR to release calcium into the cytoplasm. This is the calcium transient. Watch, all that calcium goes into the cytoplasm ready to help contraction. A little note, calcium released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum does not influence the membrane potential. Only the ions that cross the membrane, that calcium current, influence the VM. Here's a guinea pig cardiomyocyte. There's the nucleus and the cytoplasm loaded with dye that shines when exposed to calcium. This cell is in a 
an extracellular solution that's rich in calcium. And here's an electrode that will zap or stimulate an action potential. Watch what happens. First, the electrode stimulates the action potential, but we can't see it. But it does it numerous times. And every time it stimulates it, the cell shines bright because the SR releases calcium and it's exposed to that dye. The cell contracts and then it stops shining because Circa pumps calcium back into the SR. Watch how quickly this happens. Look at that. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Isn't that amazing? Thank you, Dr. Spitzer, for this. The rise in that cytoplasmic calcium activates the contractile proteins and you get systole. So the calcium binds to the troponin tropomyosin complex, removes it out of the way, and the myosin and actin contract, just like that. Everything has led up to this point. This is cardiomyocyte contraction. This is systole, the pumping of the heart, the contraction of the heart that pumps blood. The cytoplasmic calcium now must decline for the cell to relax. And most of the calcium is pumped back into the SR via circa. Circa using uh, ATP takes a bunch of this calcium and brings it back into the SR. We also have these ones up here. The rest of the cytoplasmic calcium leaves the cell via the sodium calcium exchanger like this. Sodium moving down its gradient and antiporting calcium against its gradient back out. Or the sarcolemma calcium pump, the C, uh, primary active transport, which just uses ATP to pump the calcium back out. Pumping calcium out is important since a small amount of calcium enters via those L-type calcium channels, those ones there. Thus, intracellular calcium would progressively increase if it was not pumped out of the cell using these two mechanisms. Let's take a look at, uh, so now also, if we vary the calcium current, the L-type calcium channel, we can influence the heart's contractility. So elevated epinephrine in the blood, for example, when you exercise, will increase the calcium current through the L-type calcium channel. This results in a larger sarcoplasmic release of calcium and then a more forceful contraction. That's why epinephrine is considered a positive inotropic agent. In contrast, Calcium channel blockers decrease the calcium current, which decreases the SR calcium release, which results in a less forceful contraction. Calcium channel blockers are a negative inotropic agent. So, in summary, excitation contraction coupling is a sequence of events by which the action potential leads to cardiac myocyte contraction. A rise in cytoplasmic calcium causes muscle contraction. A decline in cytoplasmic calcium causes muscle relaxation. The rise and fall is called the calcium transient. If there's no calcium transient, the cell will not contract. The larger the rise in cytoplasmic calcium, the greater the contractility. Think epinephrine. The smaller the rise in cytoplasmic calcium, the smaller the contractility. Think calcium channel blockers. And that, my friends, is excitation contraction coupling in a nutshell. Just wanted to say uh, thanks again to Dr. Spitzer for his mentor and his help in cardiovascular physiology and for that really cool guinea pig uh, animation. <laughs>